Good afternoon. Uh, also, on behalf of Rabose and Dymanex, I would like to welcome you to this uh, webinar, especially aimed yeah, uh, at the railway business. We are proud to have uh, so many participants in the webinar. And uh, the purpose of this webinar is to show uh, how digitization and additive manufacturing uh, supports the railway business to improve and to achieve their goals and objectives. Um, first, I want to introduce Diego Boscalo Bozza, the application engineer uh, for the railway at Rabu. Chris from Alcorst, senior uh, project manager at Dymanex. We're going to present two brief presentations. The first one, uh, how additive manufacturing contributes uh, to uh, the improvement of the supply chain by Dymanex. And the second one, to share new railway solutions with use cases and successes for the railway business by Rebose. Please use the chat box uh, during the webinar to ask your questions. After the presentation, uh, presentations, we are going to discuss and answer these questions. Based on the feedback of our railway uh, customers, we pointed out the pain and challenges in the supply chain. Big teams uh, are reduction of capital employed by reduction of non-moving stock and uh, write-off of parts. Also the non-availability of parts by long lead times of obsolence. Besides the loss of scarce capacity and money in the supply chain by a lot of suppliers, or the amount of parts, or the, the diversities of uh, them. And other uh, teams are, are uh, the amount of waste uh, for the environment by unnecessary transport and scrapping of parts, but also the maintainability of the assets and fleet due to high uh, complexity, less digitization, and high norms and standards are challenges and headaches, as we learned uh, from uh, the railway customers. How to solve this pain? As Dymanex, we uh, have good experiences with our pragmatic and simple approach to implement additive manufacturing uh, into the supply chain organization and to beat against this pain and challenges. We add advice based on our experiences to start small, exchange successes, and ex extend uh, step by step. Our concept focuses on three main pillars to create an efficient and reliable digitization and additive manufacturing application in the railway. The three P's, people, processes, and product. Looking to the people, the knowledge of AM, their roles, and especially the specifications and validation requirements of uh, parts are very, very important. It starts yeah, with the form, fit, and function. For the processes, we talk about integrated processes, accountability, and meeting the standards and regulations. The product contains availability of data, the analysis of printable uh, parts, the digital uh, parts uh, port, and the repeating high quality of printing and post-treatment, uh, post-treated uh, parts. The Dymanex platform supports the co uh, complete analysis and identification of printed parts based on technical and supply chain uh, data. It supports all digitization services as store the digital uh, pass, digital passport of the part and manage all sample test and validations yeah, task, what is necessary to verify the part. And finally, the recurring orders by an automated workflow management system. So also there's all the process steps 
are in one digital supply chain and uh, all connected by uh, an automated workflow. As mentioned before, digitization of parts uh, is crucial to select the right parts and to meet the quality requirements and standards for printed parts. We support different digitization services like file conversion, 3D scanning and intake, and data extraction. And in the end, it is uh, contributing to the customer strategy and improves the manufacturing yeah, of uh, the supply chain. Besides the manual data extraction, we support the automated data extraction based on artificial intelligence uh, software. Batches of uh, more than 40 to 50k uh, drawings are normal to digest during these programs. Our railway customers are really satisfied uh, with the missing technical data provided by the data extraction and feed them back into their ERP and PLM systems. So digitization allows supply chain analysis based on customer data and selects the right parts. The platform visualizes uh, visualize the printability and the economical benefit of printing parts and allows the customer to start simple the digitization and uh, sample process of the parts. After six years experience within the railway business, we concluded together with the uh, customer, uh, there are different application uh, areas to create added value and benefits by additive manufacturing. The focus was first on spare parts and then tooling came in, product optimization uh, came in and customization. But we see now more and more a new trend to use additive manufacturing for function integration by design for additive. The next sheet yeah, uh, shows different areas to focus uh, on. So more in practice, within the railway, you can point out product categories for successful implementation of uh, additive manufacturing. In metal, and in plastic. The big advantage to focus on category is to validate separate parts as evidence to approve and validate the complete category. So in this way, you speed up the implementation and the result by using additive manufacturing. I'm going to show you some uh, examples yeah, uh, in the next sheets. Here you see uh, some uh, plastic printed parts and use cases like cable reels, ventilations, yeah, um, covers. Uh, this is a nice uh, printed uh, and it's printed in the ones yeah, uh, part uh, as a uh, ventilation, uh, air ventilation uh, part yeah, uh, and also uh, covers. Here you see um, metal parts, what are very smooth finished and are uh, potential candidates for 3D printing. You see uh, uh, hinges, you see grills, you see handles. Yeah. So in the end of the, the story, yeah, um, by selecting the right parts, yeah, you can uh, print, test, validate, and verified the complete category. In conclusion, the value of additive manufacturing for the railway improves the part availability, reduces uh, the complexity, creates more agility 
and flexibility in the supply chain and optimize the cost in the supply chain. And finally, it contributes to more sustainable world. And that completely according to the railway standards EN 45 5-2. In more detail, you can say the additive manufacturing within the supply chain of the railway creates immediate, uh, immediate results on your data and digitization level. Besides, it extends the manufacturing knowledge and application of additive manufacturing and improves your traditional uh, processes and more important, it improves your supply chain and part of the manufacturing. So start with additive manufacturing when possible, but as mentioned before, start small. Exchange the successes and extend the experience within the organization. Thank you for your attention. And I uh, would like to give the floor to Diego of Rabose. All right. Uh, thank you, Chris. So let's get started. So, uh... Welcome everybody and good afternoon. So we can start about uh, the uh, robot slide. So uh, when the, we talk about uh, railway, we talk about a highly regulated sector. Therefore, take it easy into consideration where the robot ecosystem can, su can supply three main key points, a repeatable and scalable process. Basically, we supply a reliable tool and technology that allows the validation of component application. The system allows to track all the information, information from the model to the process parameters in a digital library to be consulted when necessary, where needed. The second key point is a high, high performance materials. So robots supplies materials that can be used in the railway sector, materials which must uh, meet stringent certifications. So to do this, robots provide high performance certified materials. However, the certification process is uh, particularly onerous in, in, in every aspect. So uh, robots supplies materials already certified in accordance with uh, EN 45545. An example is represent, represented by uh, Altem EM 9085F, which has the R6 certification to manufacture interior parts. The third key point is, is to speed up innovation. So another thing that must be always be taken into consideration is the attention to the customer needs. So uh, just as the railway sector has always been a, a very innovative sector, robots is also ready in the development and support of new development developments uh, with assistance and consultancy support for uh, development of new applications in uh, of high added value. Okay, uh, now I'd like to explain the potentiality of robust technology and therefore what it allows to do in the railway sector with our materials, of course. So uh, the railway regulation follows a categorization based on risk factor, size, and location of the component. In particular, here we can see that there are five categories. So the categories are subdivided in the uh, rail and non-rail parts. So basically category four to five, starting from the bottom of the table, represent, represents a non-rail parts. So they are related to part uh, which uh, don't need fire requirements. So category five is focused on uh, limit the cost of the part. So in this regard, uh, in the robust material portfolio, we can find PLA, ABS, and flex TPU. Category four focus on jigs and fixtures. So uh, for this kind of parts, the main need is having a material which uh, allows to print high toughness part. Therefore, robots make available material like uh, uh, Robos Carbon PA Pro and Tooling XCF, which is a PPS field by Carbon Fibers. The other categories represent rail parts. So three main further categories uh, based on weight and surface. So category three represents small parts which generally don't need to comply with fire requirements. And the material range through the robber's uh, material portfolio, from the functional nylon to flexible material like uh, flex TPU and polypropylene, to the super polymer uh, such as PIC and this composite like helix PIC and carbon PIC. 
Category two is related to medium sized bar which need to comply with R22, R23 and R24 according to the standard EN45545 requirements. So uh, for this kind of part, we can find uh, Altem, AM9085F, and PCABS. And finally, there is the uh, category one, which is related to large part with uh, surface greater than 0.1 square meters. And uh, this part, uh, which must comply to the R1 requirements according to uh, EN 45545. So for this category, uh, robots make available uh, Altem uh, EM9085. Okay, uh, in this slide, we can see some application that uh, we already have developed. So uh, we already have started to develop uh, several parts in the, railway in the railway fields as shown here. And uh, uh, I want to add that high maintenance cost of the, the trains high transport co transportation costs, long supply chain, infinitely times, uh, and spare parts of solutions. These are the biggest problems in the mobility sector and especially in railway sector. So robust free printing technology overcomes the limits. Furthermore, uh, the advantages brought by 3D printing are related to the possibility of scheduling in advance maintenance by focusing focusing on the rapid, targeted, and localized action in order to guarantee the full availability, increasing the quality perceived by the passenger, and by improving the degree of satisfaction of passenger, minimizing the risks and costs related to uh, logistics. Okay. One example uh, can be shown in this figure, in this picture. So uh, this is a component for uh, bed lowering and rising in, the, in the bin cars. It has been manufactured in carbon PA. Uh, the reason uh, be, why we have chosen carbon PA is because it's lightweight and toughness. In fact, we were able to uh, reduce the weight more than 50% and uh, in this way, increasing the efficiency. Furthermore, a traditional cost for manufactured part uh, compared to 3D printing is higher than 70%. Uh, and uh, on top of that, it would have lengthened the production time up to three weeks. Instead, by 3D printing uh, the parts, uh, it leads to a reduction of the lead time by reducing the manufacture time uh, only in four hours. Okay, here another, another example. Uh, that can be shown, uh, can be seen in this picture and represent a flapper using in the train toilet. It has been printed in polypropylene and uh, we have chosen this material because it uh, needs to be in contact with fluids and water and polypropylene has uh, no problem. And uh, uh, furthermore, uh, the cost of for manufacture the part, the spare part is lowered by 70% by printing part on demand when needed. Tensor free printing, the lead time for the more is, uh, is uh, just four, five hours. Say, so compared to the traditional manufacturing, which was uh, three weeks. Okay, uh, here so some few uh, more uh, applications. And again, uh, as we already said in the, in, uh, in the previous slide, in previous uh, picture, so plastic parts in the railway industry uh, needs to respect the EN 45545 uh, requirements to be used in on rail vehicles as to guarantee excellent flame resistance. Here's some example of 3D printed parts via robust technology. And uh, that's the case on the panel on the uh, right, which is a panel mounted on the sailing of a training toilet to cover pipes, uh, which was printed in Altem uh, AM9085F. And the panel is then painted to ensure excellent uh, surface finish. If parts are lighter than 100 grams, as we uh, already have seen in the previous uh, slide in the table, depending on the circumstances, also uh, non-certified material could be used on trains. So it's the case of handles for chain window, uh, the part that we see on the left, uh, printed in Carbon PA Pro, or uh, the electric motor gear, which can see in the middle of the of the slide, four door opener uh, printed in functional nylon. So the advantages related to printing of parts on demand and just in times 
tank on digital uh, warehouse by having a full material portfolio of certified material for several real applications. Furthermore, the design freedom offered by 3D printing technology allows to improve the performances of parts, which is usually designed for traditional manufacturing technology, leading therefore to weight reduction by improving the vehicle's performance. Okay, so uh, now is the Q&A session. And we can Please. So I have uh, to uh, unmute yeah. uh, my microphone. Uh, <laughs> Diego, <laughs> thank you very much uh, for uh, your uh, part of the presentation. Um, yeah, uh, we can uh, start with uh, the question and answer uh, session. Um, I see there is a question. Um, what are the key topics railway companies need to take account? I'm going to publish it. This, um, I hope that uh, I. Uh, what are the key topics railway companies need to take uh, in account in applying and or uh, scaling digitization um, uh, and additive manufacturing? Now I think that's a good uh, a good question uh, because we we learned that the uh, availability and the accuracy of the data, yeah, uh, and files, yeah, is really key. Yeah. Uh, besides that, the knowledge and the competences uh, of the engineering team is also very important. That two uh, parts, that is what we say a journey. Yeah, We have to go through uh, the, the data, the, the form, fit and function together with the engineering. Yeah, um, uh, Knowing uh, that the broad application uh, of M is uh, taking uh, time, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the customer is not uh, able to find out what the uh, final uh, data is. Yeah, then uh, we try to scan it or uh, to do an intake uh, together. Yeah, but what we see uh, is um, in the end of the story, all the uh, departments yeah um, has a lot of information available. Yeah, so uh, in the end of the story, yeah, we could uh, finalize the specification. Yeah, uh, for each uh, part. There's a great uh, journey. Uh, we see another question coming in. There's a question for Rebos, and I'm going to publish uh, this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The... Yeah. Do oh, you see it? Question. Yes, it is a question. Take it over, Diego. Rebos. Are you uh, developing all the materials that can be used for application in the railway sector? Uh, well, the question is yes. Uh, as you were able to see in the table, there is a material uh, which is a PCABS, uh, which uh, would be will be available uh, very soon, and uh, is a new material that we are adding. Uh, in our portfolio, and furthermore, I can uh, uh, I can add that uh, we are still uh, open, uh, so uh, we collect the needs from our customer and uh, the need from the market to uh, supply some uh, new solution in terms of material that uh, they can they they can use. Yeah, this I think a uh, very good uh, very good one. Um, I see a question. Um, I'm going to publish that. Yeah, uh, so a part uh, I think I can answer, and a part uh, you can answer, uh, Diego. Yeah. Um, I'm going to publish uh, that. Uh, could you please advise how much uh, it costs to establish a 3D file? Now, uh, looking uh, to uh, the, the cost, um, what we uh, have in our uh, services. We have different uh, digitization uh, services, yeah, and it, uh, it starts uh, up to uh, 120 euros. Um, and where you are going uh, to scan and do an intake, but also a part of the redesign, it ends up uh, with a couple of hundred euros. But uh, we can, uh, of course, uh, discuss that uh, upfront. Yeah. Um, the second uh, part of the question maybe is for you, uh, Diego. How is the paying for that customer of Rebosa or regular supplier? 
Uh, yeah. So, well, um, as Chris already said, again, uh, we can, uh, it is something that uh, it needs to be evaluated uh, part by part, and uh, it is a very variable uh, data and is depending from the material, from the system used, from uh, uh, the process parameter and the need for the customer. For example, if you need a part for a prototyping or functional prototyping, or if you need some uh, small batches, small series. So uh, I have not a ready, a ready answer and uh, uh, time by time, it is something that uh, we can evaluate. Um, Diego, we have another uh, nice uh, question from uh, Daniel Eduardo, um, and I'm going to publish that. Uh, maybe you can uh, pick him up uh, as a question. Yes, so let me. Yeah. Uh, what possibilities exist to combine editing manufacturing with injection molding to uh, make some of these components? Thanks. Okay, uh, good questions. Interesting one. So, uh, right now, uh, there is some possibilities to print over other parts, but it is something that uh, we are just uh, doing in a research and developing phase, you know. So uh, basically, uh, it might be possible, uh, for example, instead of printing over uh, the platform, over the film, it might be possible and it might be uh, activated the possibility to print over uh, plastic parts, maybe to uh, add some features or for example, to repair some some uh, parts. But it is something that in literature uh, is not uh, diffused, maybe just in uh, research field. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, answering. Um, there is a question uh, from Mario Rossi uh, with respect uh, to uh, the uh, certification of the EN uh, 4554 uh, 5-5. Um, Diego, pick it up. Yes. Uh, so the answer is uh, uh, yes, we uh, supply ready certified material, for example, uh, Altem uh, EM9084. Uh, 85F and uh, uh, PC ABS, uh, which might be uh, used uh, and certified uh, EN 455452. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, for, for now we have G2 materials that are uh, certified within this class. And again, we are uh, searching, we are studying and uh, collecting customer needs. Uh, and adding new material when uh, new material according to to the certification. Okay, thank you, uh, Diego. Another question from uh, Vincent: um, Who owns the IT file? Customers, supplier, or Bose? And who will have access to the library? Um, yeah, that is really a good uh, question. Um, looking to our platform, yeah, um, the strict answer uh, is. Uh, the customer is the owner yeah, of the parts and parts data. So uh, he is also uh, the owner of the intellectual uh, property. Um, and um, we secure that yeah, uh, with um, the whole uh, information uh, security uh, on, on that. And only the customer yeah, is uh, allowed to uh, exchange yeah, the data yeah, via a request for quotation or via an order. Yeah, so in the end of the story, all data uh, is still owned by uh, the customer and the whole platform is supporting that. Yeah, um, and the uh, service providers are using that information what uh, was freed up by, by the customer. Then a question with respect to uh, validation. Who is validating uh, the quality of uh, the parts? Um, let's uh, split uh, the answer, Diego. Um, let's uh, say it uh, from uh, from our side. The the, the validation, yeah, um, is is based, uh, of course, on uh, the the quality of uh, the AM service provider, especially Robosa. Diego can answer that. Yeah, yeah um, and we uh, support that uh, fully on the platform. Dus uh, we get that information. 
uh, also uh, available for the customer so that uh, test reports, measurements reports, yeah, uh, all evidence uh, on the quality yeah, is on the platform available to approve and, and verify the part. Diego, can you um, elaborate uh, on that a little bit yeah. more? Yeah, I can add that, uh, uh, of course, the uh, validating, so who is validating the quality of the, the part? Of course, uh, any part that we produce are uh, analyzed and uh, qualified from the printing uh, point of view. So uh, about the dimensions, the dimensional and geometrical tolerances and so on. So uh, we certify, we validate from the quality uh, point of view. Uh, then the application uh, for that is the customer, the railway company or the customer that uh, has ordered the part which uh, uh, validate the application and give feedback, feedback about. Okay, thank you uh, Diego. Um, then there's a question, uh, how long does it take between uh, scanning a part uh, until uh, production? Um, yeah, that is uh, uh, what we say. Uh, depending uh, on uh, uh, on the customer, the location, and where we have to to pick. But normally, yeah, uh, when we uh, receive uh, the uh, the part, yeah, uh, within uh, a couple of uh, days, yeah, the scanning, the intake, the digitization, uh, and the approval by the customer is uh, is finished. And then uh, we can uh, give uh, the, the right uh, price. Uh, we do, the, of course, the conversion to uh, AM technology and AM material. And, um, and we can start the production. So it is up to uh, the urgency of, um, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the case. Yeah, we can do it in a couple of days uh, up to uh, uh, within a couple of, uh, uh, within a week. Maybe uh, Robozo can uh, also elaborate it uh, on, on that part. Yes, uh, so typically uh, to after the uh, scanning of the part, for example, 3D, uh, for reverse engineering, so scanning the part, elaborate the file, and this is something that uh, uh, you, so usually we receive the 3D parts. Uh, the, 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 geo, the geometrical model of the part and uh, we convert to STL uh, which is a format ready for uh, to be used uh, within the CAM software, licensing software for generating the uh, instruction for print the part and uh, but usually it's quite fast so reverse engineering and uh, uh, get the model and print so uh, the print time and the lead time for uh, part like this uh, uh, I, I was showing the previous slide, and uh, yeah, and which organization certifies the prototype prior to use it? So uh, for this question, you can uh, directly contact me, so we can uh, discuss uh, uh, more deep about uh, this need. But usually, there are some uh, lab that can make some tests uh, directly on the part or uh, we print together the parts, some samples that then later uh, can be uh, tested and uh, validate the, uh, the, the, the material and uh, the job, I would say, so the print of the part and, uh, and the samples. Okay, Diego, uh, thank you very much. Now there is a question with uh, respect uh, to uh, the size of uh, the uh, batches of uh, printed uh, parts. I'm going to uh, publish that. Is, um, yeah, that is a uh, really good uh, good question. Um, uh, what was the, the largest batch of uh, parts that you uh, printed uh, for uh, railway interiors? Um, from my experiences, but Jaco, please uh, <laughs> do your uh, addition. From my experiences, um, uh, we have uh, uh, printed uh, batches from a couple of hundreds of, uh, of parts. Um, looking to, uh, to other uh, business uh, like uh, the automotive uh, business. Yeah, uh, or the, the electrical uh, business. Yeah, we uh, printed um, uh, batches uh, up to uh, more than thousand uh, parts. So that is really uh, based on the business case. Yeah, uh, for the customer, 
uh, uh, about availability or shorter lead times or the urgency yeah, or uh, modernization uh, needs and that kind of things. Yeah, um, so uh, there uh, are good business cases yeah, to have uh, uh, and, and printed uh, large batches. But Diego, uh, what is your experience uh, with the, the size of uh, the printed uh, batches? Yeah, so uh, from a robust size, uh, the large batch uh, was close to 1000 parts. So let's say it was uh, 700, 800 parts. And uh, uh, the main advantage for parts like this uh, is to uh, have the possibility to supply, uh, for example, um, without having physical warehouse, you have digital warehouse. So you have just uh, you just have the three uh, D model of the part, and when needed on demand, just print one part, ten parts, one hundred parts is the same. And uh, uh, basically, we can uh, answer to the customer immediately without any, uh, for example, uh, restoring the uh, traditional production uh, of the part, uh, or the production system of the part. So that is the main advantages of the technology. Okay. Um, are there more questions left? Otherwise, we are going uh, to close uh, the webinar. I don't think that there are uh, more uh, questions. Um, yeah, we, uh, uh, as Robose and Diamondx, are very proud yeah, to uh, organize this uh, webinar. Uh, really good, uh, good questions. I uh, hope that you um, uh, have got a lot of. Uh, new information, um, new experiences. Yeah, um, you see here um, on the last sheet, yeah, uh, our uh, contact data, yeah, that's the info.robose.com and the info.diamondx.com. Dus uh, uh, if we have more questions, uh, how uh, can we contact uh, to you? I uh, see uh, from Vincent, as uh, what I explained, uh, please, uh, send an, uh, an email to uh, info at roboso.com uh, and to uh, info at uh, diamondx.com. Diego, yeah, your last word. Good, good. Thank you, Chris. So uh, thank you, everybody, again, for uh, having joined us. And uh, so, again, if you have more questions, I invite you to contact us. Uh, by sending an email to the uh, contacts shown this uh, slide. So, nice. Okay, thank you very much. And um, I hope that you uh, are going to uh, attend also next webinars uh, from uh, our side. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Good. Bye.